This episode, Keeping the Critters Out. Well, John and Larry decided we'd have a discussion about keeping warm-blooded critters out of the house. This does not include children, but some of these techniques would work for children just as well. Both, both hosts, both John and I, have had a little problem with some of our furry friends, mostly squirrels, um, but also I've had a few rats and mice as well. So anyway, we're going to give you some tips to keep these unwanted critters out of your home. Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show, home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation on your home maintenance and repair. This edition is entitled, Keeping the Critters Out. And to help me explain, as always, is my ever-cheerful co-host and old buddy, John Johnny. Yes, sir. Keep let's the, talk about getting rid of our yeah. fuzzy friends. Yeah, let's let's do it. You know, I had a lot of problems with those uh, those squirrels. I tell you what, once they get the scent, boy, they're just relentless. Yeah, so that's yeah. A, a you're starting off with wonderful points. They do have they scent right, yeah. so they they control where they come in by scent, and so there's one of the tips we'll give on yeah. the, in the future will be about about that. But, but yeah, no, but you know my story is you know once they once they do that, we'll get to all this in a minute. But once they do that, boy, they they uh, they uh, continue, and I and I had problems with um, with one uh, particular place on my house, and they kept. They kept it up and kept it up and kept it up. Um, it, it was year over year over year. Um, and I had my house uh, sealed up, you know, and uh, they ripped they ripped some of that off, uh, some, yeah. some aluminum off, <laughs> and they actually got back in. Uh, but they, they're not getting back in now. So, you know, it was, it was a, uh, um, God, how can I say this? Uh, it was just a you know a learning curve over the uh, over what, what turned out to be several years, right? Of finding where these things were getting into, you know, and then of course you know you got all the others we'll talk about, but uh, you know people, it's really funny. You'll see, I'll see uh, squirrels sitting on on somebody's house, you know, right at the break of dawn, and I'm like, yeah, they're in. Yeah, they're in. They're in. So we, we had them, we had them, so we don't have an actual attic or crawl space. And they got up in between our joists and rafters in the house and they were scratching. And then (laughs) they actually, they actually got above, we have a, a, a small bathroom upstairs and they actually started nesting above that. And how do I know that? Well, I took my camera and I've got great video of, you know, my little fuzzy buddies up there, and they they did they did not like the camera coming up into their little nest. Yeah, right. They did right. they did not think that was all that much fun. But, um, yeah. So anyway, they're 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 problematic, and they're they're actually quite difficult to get rid of. Very. Um, did you, did you have a professional company come out I, and do your? Yeah, I did because you know all of this was you know, thirty five forty feet in the air. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, those days are long gone. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and and the point, the reason I'm asking that is we had a professional company come out and do ours as well. And the reason was for exactly the same reason. They were up at the very highest peak of the house, <laughs> right? At the always. at the worst place. Yeah, oh, always, yeah. always. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's actually part of the tip, right, is understanding that they're going to go to the places where you won't. Right. And so yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. They're, yeah. they're, yeah. they're going to be in those inaccessible places because let's be honest, if you could just put some wire screen right over the hole, that's right above your door, you know, that's 10 feet right. off the ground. You do that. And that's what you, what, I mean, we did that because that was where they first started coming in was right in yeah. above the house. Yeah. And I, we shut all that off and then they still were getting, and I'm like, yeah. well, where in then the they heck were are just they laughing getting? at you. Oh, don't get me started. Yeah, and they just laugh sit at up there yeah. and chatter at me. Right. And I'm like, yeah right right but anyway so with that so what are some of the triggers about why um they come into your home well when it when it gets cold um yes. you know and, they, and they'll, they'll they'll find a they'll find a you know a warm opening or they'll just they'll sense it seems like they sense you know the warm air coming out of maybe a leak or something out of your house um and then they'll start uh you know i've had them just dig right through the siding um, yeah, yep. and I always tell people, you know, um, yeah, you know, they always, t- <laughs> it always, it always amazes me. People take, uh, people take 
uh, pictures of of the squirrels, you know, and they see them hanging on their screens and stuff, you know. Oh, look, it's isn't this good. cute? Yeah, isn't this no. cute? You know, and they post it on the, you know, uh, on one of the next door apps or you know whatever you use. And I'm like, mm, no, no, you know what's going to happen is um, they're going to get on the top, like you just said, that as far away as they can, and cause about uh, you know six hundred or eight hundred dollars worth of damage just to get in. Uh, and then who knows what goes on, you know, in your attic, you know, if they, you know, if any of these other kind of, uh, rodents get in there and start chewing wires apart and stuff. And, you know, you're on vacation and you come home and your house is just like a smoking match. So, well, the good news there is you got rid of the squirrels at least that, yeah, they got rid of themselves. Well, but maybe not because, you know, they'll bail out. They'll like, Oh, hell, look at, we just lit a fire. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Dude. <laughs> it's not squirrel flambe, yeah. as they say, yeah. unfortunately. But um, so, too, one of the other things is I've also had rats. I've actually had Norway roof rats, yeah. which are very, Ooh, very man. similar. Those are tough um, to get rid of, too. Yeah, they're they're tough. They're actually easier than squirrels because they will uh, respond to poison fairly well. But one of the, we'll, we're going to get to the tips, and I think that that's it. But the big reason, the first question was why they get in, and John's right. It's always it seems like it's at a weather change. They want to go just like we do. They want to go to a nice warm comfortable yep. spot that's dry you know and so they love attics and crawl spaces and up under your soffits now one of the things too if you think about it if you're a rodent and you've got two big front teeth uh and you're going to dig through things what might be the type of wood you're looking for john any of it i will tell you i will tell you i've had i've had it all i've i've i got a squirrel that's been chewing on my five quarter boards on my on your deck um, yep wow yep wow i've had it all man i can talk about this all day i don't want to talk about this all day but well okay <laughs> i mean they they come through but rotten wood you know rotten wood is where rot, i was rotten, going with that. yeah rotten wood yep. if you have rotten wood they'll, they'll, that's their easiest entry you know um and where is the rotten wood usually uh, well it's usually in <laughs> it's all to to me where where it was was in nooks and crannies that, that i couldn't get to um up they if you notice so they're always in like a like a uh, like a hidden little uh crook or something in your in your roof line or something like yep. that corners so, yeah it's always something like that and you just have to be after this all the time and even if you uh don't have rotten wood uh, and you live around these things, um, you know, or they live around you, boy, I'm telling you, relentless. <laughs> relentless. They're relentless. Yeah. So so they're looking. Yeah. So they like to go in that rotten wood. So the, it's kind of funny. So when you get you don't want to have the squirrels. But one of the biggest tips we can say is watch your your soffits and your, yep. your uh, fascia. And if it starts to rot replace it you know get it done because it keeps the critters out as well it's it's more than just aesthetics it actually keeps the critters out of your home um rats mice it uh it doesn't matter squirrels all the same um it's going to keep birds for that matter bats if you have bats you know you're same thing you're looking for holes where they get in and uh, i actually had a home with bats in it once john that was not that was really challenging too because bats Fortunately, we only had like two. Thank God, because man, if I'd had a whole bunch of bats, it would have been really bad. Um, and I and I actually got the bats out without having to to do anything to harm them, which I was really glad. But I got them out one day. Man, it was really dicey. I'm in the attic. You know, they're flying around. Well, the, the, the thing, thing about they fly out. Yeah, and the thing I you have to be careful hole. about is that you know they're you know rabies. Rabies, right? And that is a that's a that's a scary part about um, you know having having those things around for sure. Yep. But the other side of it is bats are very like I don't want to get rid of bats because of the amount of bugs that they eat. So they're really a beneficial animal to have around. You just don't want them in your attic. You really don't build a bad house and put them out in the bad house. Anyway, be that as it may. All right. So they're living up in dry, you know, in dr- up in your attic in a dry conditions and beautiful points. So the key here is trying to find those entry points. And we've kind of alluded to some of those things. I'll tell you one way to find an entry point that I've used in the past. Entry point, meaning where the where the squirrels and or rats and or whatever get in is to go up in the, when it's when it's light outside, but go up when it's dark up in the attic, turn the lights off and look, if you can see daylight you have a potential entry point that you need to somehow close up in some way or another. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. One of the most effective ways is to put hardware cloth up, which is just metal mesh. 
um, and or and or John, you put what'd you do? You had them put they put um, aluminum up. Like in, in in a lot of uh, in a lot of places, and then used uh, you know the, the 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 aluminum screen and others, the thick okay. aluminum cl- hardware cloth, or the stuff yeah. that we used at that uh, at the deck at that house. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hardware cloth. Yeah. Um. Oh, oh no, that was that perforated was the, metal. Anyway, yeah. Same. Yeah. Same da- basic difference, but something that they can't chew through, basically, right? And um, and it needs to be pretty thick. You'd be surprised. And, They'll go through like flashing aluminum flashing they'll actually yeah. chew through that they'll well they pull it off you know, what i would you know what they what they'll do is they'll they'll take they'll take the they'll take the hardware cloth and then put the prongs out <laughs> you know they'll yeah. bend it out because and then they, well, as soon as they get poked uh they they go the other way yep, yep. um and they and they actually attach this stuff with screws you know the yep. little the little screws the nut drivers you know but uh, anyways um yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a, it, it can be a real, it can be a real challenge to, to uh, close the place up. So one, yeah. And one of those tips is you, you want the animals to be out if possible. Now at my house, they <laughs> actually had the one, they had one way. Um, yeah. Extruder uh, box. Yeah. They had a box where the animal could get out and it's not get back way. in. <laughs> Yeah. And that that would be one of the few reasons why I would say actually don't besides height and a few other safety concerns why you shouldn't basically sometimes you shouldn't do this by yourself. But if you un, unless you can get one of those boxes where they can actually get out, you want to make sure they're out because if they're in, it's they're just gonna, they're what they'll do is dig a hole somewhere else yeah. to get out. Oh yeah. So you just create a, a oh, different yeah. and set if you of get, problems. If you get a couple of those <laughs> things cornered, you got yourself a real circus going on. <laughs> and don't so, let your cat or dog up there either. Um <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and and these are and these are the the, the least of the, the least of the worries I can get up there. You know, um, you know, I always I always joke with the guys. I'll see them; they'll have you know their uniforms on that their their critter control and stuff like that, and I know what they're doing. And I always ask them about the you know stories about what they find. You know what they? Oh. Find. it's always entertaining. It's always yeah, entertaining. There's... You know, <clears throat> you know, you, and I'm thinking to myself, well. Man, I don't want to be up in the attic running across a, you know, a cornered raccoon. So, uh, no, you know, but, uh, anyways, Johnny, didn't we post that picture out on our Facebook group of the guy that went down in the crawl space and there was a bear hibernating under there? <laughs> Did we post that one? <laughs> like, whoa, I, hey, yeah. whoa. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a, that was quite a picture. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right. So that's, so that's, you know, finding those entry points and, and trying to get them closed up, you know, again, make sure that try to get the pens out. The other one where that we, we talked about it before, but that scent, John, are there some tips that you have for reducing the scent? Um, I, you know, I honestly don't, I don't know how to get rid of that other than, um, blocking it for a while. I mean, you can try washing it off. I tried everything, you know, and you, it's hard to tell where the, it's hard to tell where that scent is. Yeah, of course. And that's the and that's a and that's an issue. Um, you know, I I know the guys that uh, you know we had some some rats or a mouse or you know whatever come in and the guys were looking around and and if you see a grease spot between like in our case it was between the siding and the foundation that, that you know that's where that's where they're coming in because it comes off their their coat you know off their fur. Yep. But um yeah, I mean I I don't know how to really get rid of the scent other than um you know trying to bleach it off or you know doing something. I don't yeah, know. there's coyote there's bleach. Urine. I don't know. Yeah, there, well <laughs> yeah, like there's a whole lot of ways to do it that are just like that. You can use, you know, or you could go to the attic and pee on it, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> they're not real the human the human scent doesn't scare them right they yeah, need no, you need a predator scare scent them. actually actually it's like hey man i i smell a human i got there's food around <laughs> there's food around that's right that's exactly it so it's actually it, and, that and man, but yeah there is get smart quick too they do yeah they well folks if you've ever had a bird feeder where you've tried to keep the squirrels <laughs> out good luck because they none of every i've never seen one that actually truly works i mean they do but then they figure the freaking things out it's amazing it is. um anyways you know some of the things like you said john I've, I've heard people spray go up and like spray like fox urine and things like that and folks where do you get fox urine go ask some hunter friends they'll tell you because they use it as a scent mask for people um but that's kind of nasty 
Um, you can try some things like pepper spray and stuff like that. It's the same thing. It, it sort of kind of works, but not really. Um, I mean, it might work. Um, I think one of the things that you, that you and I have done that works pretty successfully, believe it or not, this will drive them out too. If you want to close up the holes, stick your ozone generator up there that drives them out of that dri- definitely drives them out. I don't know if it, if it keeps them out, but boy, they won't stick around in the, in the attic for very long when you run the ozone generator yeah. in there. Yeah. And if they can't get out, it'll kill them. <laughs> But <laughs> it'll kill them, right? <laughs> and then you got then you got a whole new. I uh, used to have dead squirrels up in the attic, and man, whew, boy, that's good some kind of stink. Away. That's some, some kind of stink that permeates the whole house. Boy, I'll tell yeah. you that much. Yeah. So some of the other, you know, to, to get them out, some of the other options are trap them. Um, you can try poison. I've never had any luck with poison whatsoever with squirrels. They just won't eat it. I've tried peanut butter. I've tried everything. Nothing. No, nothing seems uh, to no, work. No, it doesn't work. It, yeah. it just doesn't work. Um, the only you got to trap them in a live got, trap need, or, or whatever well, and, and get live trap. And then, you, you know, know, I've seen people, they, they, they trap them in a live trap and, a, you know, have a heart trap or whatever. And, and then they take it down the street, you know, or in another neighborhood and dump the thing. Um, but you know, I, that's, that, that's getting, that's band-aiding the whole situation. You got to close the, we just talked about, you still got to close, you got to do, you got to fix it. it it's just not going to go away. It's will it just, not go it away. Will not go away. The only poison I've ever heard that works is lead poisoning. And that's yeah. usually the 22 <laughs> caliber variety. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's, that's unfortunately, true. if they're really bad, you really sometimes that's the only option. You just have to well, remove I them. Have, yeah, <clears throat> I have found that some squirrels, you know, will, uh, you know, some are better than others, and there are there are some I don't know what it is in their gene pool, but some of them are just absolute crazy chewers on everything. Like you know, for instance, I had you know my grill was eaten up, all the plastic parts were eaten up. My garden hose started to get eaten up. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. that. But and, yes, and they, they do. And that. they ate up my uh, my solar lights. You were here one time when the thing was eating on my solar lights. Yes, I was. And, it was um, really annoying. Honestly, um, <laughs> you know. So so there's you know so there's some sometimes you just you know there's no there's no uh, the recidivism is just <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's capital punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so. and we're not saying that that's the option for everybody because it's not. But at the same time, sometimes you end up with no choice. I mean, in my case, <clears throat> I ended up having to do a little bit of that because they, they just would not go away. We tried everything. We wired everything up. They kept chewing through. I mean, they were they, it was it. I got so tired of putting hardware cloth up that I finally I was just like, I think I need to reside the whole house with like steel. <laughs> I, you know, you, I mean, it honestly, it's, it's kind of funny because it, it almost t- turned into that for me. You know, I was so frustrated that um, these things just kept coming in and coming in. I'm like, man, what do I have to do here? Do I have to put, you know, close the whole house up with aluminum, you know, ah, aluminum it's, shield? It's, it's, like, it's kind of crazy. So. So some of the tips, some, how can you avoid this? So what are some of the ways you can avoid this? Well, One of the ways it's really simple. Yeah, I have found, and it wasn't simple for me, it wasn't inexpensive, but because I have the big trees around. You right. got, and, and try to get rid of all the limbs that are reaching across over your house um, or all the shrubs or something that are growing next to your house, uh, you know, and they just climb right up on my brick. You know, sometimes I see them jump off the, the oak tree, you know, the branch, onto the chimney yep, uh, and down, running around, you know, and I'll hear them on top of the house every once in a while. They can't get back in after, after, you know, that's what I've, what I was just describing earlier. But, uh, you know, every once in a while I hear, you know, scampering and I'll think, man, are they in the house again? No, they're, you can, you can hear them running around on their, on their roof. Yeah. They you run know, look, around looking around, you know, they're playing up there. I'm like, Oh, but definitely keep the tree yes. line. Keep and, and if you have any trees that touch your roof, now this is this is really almost more important for rats and mice. Yes. So you really, really, really for rats and mice in particular, because I've had the rat issue. And why did I have a rat issue? Because I had tree. Literally, I had some tree branches that were touching. They climb up the tree. They go right out on the roof. They do the same thing. The squirrels. They find a soft spot. They dig a hole. They're in there. And um, the good news about rats are is they do respond to poison. So, you know, unfortunately, I trimmed out the trees and then poisoned them. And we used, I just used regular rat poison. And, of course, they, they leave the house because they go looking for water. Yeah. Uh, but um, 
for it definitely, definitely, definitely keep the trees. It also helps save your roof. There's a bit of a, it's a double-edged sword, right? So it also keeps all the junk off your roof and the mold and the mildew and things like that. So it's more than just, than just keeping the critters out, but it is really important to keep the trees off the house. Um, another, this is a little bit, but bird feeders, right? So Folks, bird feeders need to be pretty far away from the house. Don't bait the animals into your close to your home because guess what? You know, just like us, we like the refrigerator in I, the next room. Yeah, and, I, and I'll tell you what I what I see all the time, all the time, is people put a bird feeder right on their deck, and here come the squirrels. Yep, squirrels. And they are relentless and re- on a bird oh, feeder. Oh, oh my god! Oh yeah. And and it is a circus out there, okay? <laughs> and all I can think of is these things, now that they're this close, they're going to be exploring how to get into your place. No doubt. Well, again, you, you know no what? No doubt, and it's way too close. I, I don't know. I, listen, you know, what I, what I mentioned earlier, I've just had way too much experience with these things over, over the last, you know, 30 years. New. I don't want those so, things around, you know, closer than that. I do have to qualify, folks. To give you a description, John lives in the woods. I mean, literally in the woods. His house is surrounded by some very large trees. And I think that has a little bit to do with it. Oh, it's um, a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with it. I don't have quite so many trees around, but I do have quite a number See, of squirrels. When I, 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 I'm amazed, actually, at how many squirrels there are in my neighborhood. So Yeah, I mean, when I lived in uh, Chicago, I never had squirrels you know, in the house or, or even trying to right. get into the house, as I recall. Now we did have a raccoon that went down the chimney into the basement Ew. and back up the chimney and out. And all we came down there, we saw, you know, raccoon feet because of the soot on yep. the floor in the basement, yep. <laughs> walking around exploring and out he went. But you know, I never had this this problem. Down, you know, where where I'm living right now, it's uh, in, in everybody around here. Um, just because of the issues. trees, is, yeah. yeah, it's just a uh, it, it's you know you you got to deal with it. Yeah. And I yeah. had a, a neighbor uh, that I was doing some work for, and I I noticed the same thing going on. My eye goes right to these things now. You know, <laughs> it's like of course. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you got squirrels in your uh, in your attic in your house somewhere. You're like, so. Eh. We're- so where I grew up, we had we had walnut trees everywhere. <clears throat> My dad had this thing about growing black walnut trees, and so anyway, we had we had lots of squirrels, but again, we had none in the house that I can I, ever you remember. You know, it, it's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's but, sometimes been. Speaking of bird feeders, there was a time when I was grown up that we had rats out. So we did not have the bird feeder was kind of off and away from the house, but we did have rats underneath the bird feeder. They were they were. Uh, these are not city rats. These are country rats. Not that there's a difference. They're all the same, but they're, they were really clean as far as rats go. You know, they weren't these nasty city type rats that you, when you think of, but they had built an actual uh, tunnel in underneath the bird feeder. Why? Because of simple food. Um, and so we fixed that problem by moving the bird feeder and, um, the rats, you know, moved out. They never came into the house either, but they used to live in, they'd come in the barn and stuff like that, you know, where, where we, but anyway, that's that's uh, a lot of this. Really, a lot of this you can control with food. Um, one of the so one of the other tips we're just going to kind of move on. One of the other tips is use a plastic owl, um, and plastic owls kind of work. I'll tell you what they what happens is is they they do get if you don't move them on a regular basis, <laughs> they, get, they the, figure them out. Yeah, they figure them out, right? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> my uh, my uh, preferred method is to just call in the real owls and let them do what owls yeah. do. Um, we're really lucky actually where we live now, we have a whole series of owls. Yeah. I've, I've seen some owls like really close to the house, but they don't, I never see them with squirrels. The same thing with the hawks. I really don't know if I were a hawk and lived in my neighborhood, I'd be eating squirrel. Cause that's about, I mean, it'd be, it's easy pickings. I mean, they're everywhere and occasionally they'll take one, but not very often. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, but use a plastic owl. That'll work. Um, use a taste repellent. So again, these are like some, like some spicy, you can get some spicy, really it's just made of natural, like, um, cayenne pepper and stuff. And they chew on that and they poof, they're gone. You know, they'll, they'll do it. This one I love use a motion activated sprinkler system. <laughs> you, so, you know, yeah. the, go back to the, the, the taste repellent real quick is that, um, you know, you can put, you can put pepper in, in your, in your bird feed. Right. 
Yes. Because that doesn't it doesn't affect birds. But when the squirrels right. get into it, you know, man, they uh uh you know, put it put in some real good peppers, though, like ghost peppers. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're really, and then you really, you know, then you can really look for some fun when those squirrels get into that. Yeah, because they're like, whoa. Yeah, hey. you'll, yeah, they'll they'll be gone for a while. Yeah, you can do that to your neighbors if you don't like your neighbors too. Just exactly. mix it in with their food. Yeah, you know, that's no, for another that, show. That's for another show. That's right. <laughs> um, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other thing. I was just thinking of something else, Johnny. But anyway, I'll I'll mention that sometime in a different show. Um, all right. What else do we got? Any other ways to keep the squirrels and the and the critters out? No, I think we... mostly it's about controlling entry. Is the big <coughs> excuse me? Yeah, that's uh, that's about it. And that's the, that's, that's the big a, thing. That's the long and people... the short of it. Yeah, really. And it's just it's not as easy. It's really not as easy, boy. And when we had them, you know, and of course they're scratching up in the on the drywall up underneath. The dog was going crazy. It was a nightmare. Yeah, it's a it, it's uh, a it's a nightmare. And you know, I I think the thing is, you know, go go into this. This, uh, you know, the, the last thing I'll say is go into this with your eyes wide open and just really understand it's it's probably going to be a very hard process if you try to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, without some kind of professional help, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, because um, you're, you're you'll get you'll get frustrated. You'll get frustrated very quickly. I got frustrated with the professional people. They had to very, come back three times. Yep. And, and they, it was. And, uh, you know, it was something else. I thought, boy, it's a lot of money until they came back three times. And I was like, oh, okay, it wasn't so bad, you know. And generally, they, um, they'll they even tell you that, you know, the first time might not be the the last time they're there. And that's yeah. why you pay, you know, if you're on a if you're on a program, that's why you pay insurance for the, you know, these guys, you know, a, a yearly. And they come out and they keep, you know, monitoring this. And if anything happens, they're, they're on the hook to fix it, so. So it it brings up a different speaking of speaking of pests, John. How do we keep the spaceships from landing at the house? <laughs> yeah, um, ghost peppers. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's worth a try? <laughs> hey, what the heck? I've right. tried everything else. You know, you know. I mean, you know. Yeah. What can I say? I'm just uh, whatever. All right, folks. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please send us an email. Questions at handymanprosradioshow dot com or at handymanprosradioshow at gmail dot com. Either way, we will get the message. We will put your stuff out on the air. <clears throat> um, we have a Facebook page that is at Handyman Pros, and also you can go to our website, handymanprosradioshow dot com. With all of that, we appreciate you listening. We'll see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show. 